Well, you could, I think it will be start, time to start now. I should introduce you. I think so. Uh, okay. <clears throat> At our seminar, uh, today's talk is uh, of Vasily Mantorov. Uh, he uh, will tell us about uh, version of methods in classical code. Uh, thank uh, you very much. Question. Thank you very much, Igor. And actually, I have two titles of the present talk. And in fact, this talk is going to be one, um, uh, the first one in the series of talks. And uh, uh, the final goal is to construct uh, lots of virtual not uh, theory methods uh, for uh, constructing picture valued invariants and other uh, invariants uh, by using virtual knots for various objects in classical topology. Uh, and tomorrow I will be mostly concentrated on a tiny piece, uh, which corresponds to the uh, name which was announced, uh, the name uh, uh, free group valued invariants of uh, free knots. So free knots is a very, uh, 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 rough simplification of virtual knots, and these objects have invariants uh, valued in pictures. And now I will talk about free groups because free groups are somehow uh, related to pictures. Nevertheless, I will tell uh, a lot of words about uh, of the total framework, uh, how it fits into the general concept of how to construct uh, virtual not uh, invariance of various objects uh, valued in, uh, say, free knots, which can later turn into uh, free groups or pictures or whatever. Uh, so, um, again, it will be a tiny piece, maybe the last piece of the whole uh, st uh, story, and the whole story can start from I don't know, knots or manifolds or two knots or vibrations or whatever, and uh, land somewhere uh, in three knots uh, or um, some other objects. And uh, finally, uh, we will be able to construct picture valued invariants or invariants valued in uh, some other uh, picture like objects. And uh, three groups are uh, among them. Uh, so, here is the uh, more detailed plan. So having classical knots or maybe links, uh, we can get uh, something like links. Uh, well, uh, links are somewhat better than knots and braids are somewhat better than links. And actually we have written a book uh, called uh, Invariance in Pictures and uh, invariants and pictures allow us to construct lots of braid invariants um, valued in uh, very nice uh, groups called G and K. And actually, uh, uh, we want to make uh, knots closer to maybe braids, so knots, then links, then braids. But here we are going to um, follow some other way. So maybe we have, can have links and thickness cylinder. Uh, and uh, what's the difference between links in the second cylinder and uh, maybe class and maybe classical knots or links? Well, uh, having a cylinder, uh, we can get somewhat called parity. And the parity is something which is related to homology. To, today, we will uh, uh, touch on this uh, uh, notion many times. And actually having this parity, uh, which is absent, if we uh, deal with just uh, um, uh, classical knots uh, from the simplest point of view of uh, diagrams with right master moves. So having this parity, we will be able to do lots of things like group valued invariants and picture valued invariants. So then we can get a sort of free knots and then we can get uh, picture valued invariants. And uh, this um, is more or less uh, the fourth uh, part and uh, this uh, will be discussed with uh, uh, this will be discussed um, with a much more detail uh, and uh, some examples will be given. Uh, and one more general principle uh, of our talk 
uh, is uh, to make uh, invariance uh, non-commutative. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, uh, lots of invariants in topology count something, some points or some other discrete objects, like, you know, uh, we take some moduli space, which turns out to be finite dimensional, and we take some characteristic classes. And having characteristic classes, we can uh, say, uh, uh, take uh, some pairing between homology and cohomology, and then say, okay, having this moduli space, we can count this point plus that point. And then we say, okay, uh, now we have so many, uh, I don't know, uh, monopoles or instant tones or whatever. And, and now I would like to propagate the principle uh, that we can do not just a, a bare count of some uh, uh, units, uh, which can lead us to maybe some number or some polynomial, but uh, we can uh, arrange them along a sort of path and having such a path uh, we can uh, arrange them to get an invariant, uh, which is valued in free group. And non-commutative things uh, are much more interesting than just commutative things. And uh, uh, well, uh, uh, we are doing to concentrate, we are going to concentrate on uh, this in detail uh, while talking about free nuts. Uh, um, well, and this, um, uh, work, uh, well, we have discussed it with a lot, with many people, and I, I apologize if I didn't mention someone, but of course, uh, the most important is uh, our discussion with Kim Sun John, who helped me quite a lot uh, in even in preparing this talk, not only in discussing various details, and actually, uh, Kim Sun John's talk. Uh, um, just recently, his talk about knots and, and links in the cylinder are also a part of this framework. Uh, have a knots somewhere when we have non-trivial homology or cohomology uh, gives rise to the existence of parity. And having something which is non, uh, uh, which is uh, not quite uh, even, or which is homologically non-trivial, we can get to something. Uh, uh, something similar to free nodes. Uh, so uh, having parity, uh, we want some crossings to be even and some crossings to be odd. And actually um, uh, having uh, just Z2 homology is uh, often enough to get parity. And uh, well, uh, the first maybe half of my talk will be devoted to uh, the description of the general picture. And in the second half, I will talk more about uh, about the details of uh, what to do with free nuts. Uh, well, um, uh, some words about cats. Uh, in fact, um, uh, we want to uh, consider invariance of knots valued in cats. What do I mean by a cat? I mean a sort of a sort of knot diagram, or maybe a collection of knot diagrams, or maybe a, a collection of knot diagrams with coefficients. Well, what do people usually do if they want to construct an invariant? They count something. Uh, they count, uh, well, the number of colorings, or if we want to have some categorification, uh, we want uh, to make some uh, dimensions and we count some dimensions and uh, sometimes we get torsion groups or something like that. But now I want uh, a diagram of a knot to be valued in a uh, I want a uh, um, uh, in knot invariant to be valued uh, in a knot diagram. Well, I, I will mention this several times du during this talk, uh, but actually I have lectured about that many times that in virtual knots, uh, we have lots of evidences how to construct invariants of virtual knots uh, valued in uh, something like uh, linear combinations of pictures. Uh, if you are um, not uh, familiar with virtual knots very much, we can consider just what is called flat knots, which are curves on two surfaces, uh, maybe modular homotopy, uh, homotopy and stabilization. So having curves on two surfaces, uh, we can say, okay, a curve in, on such a two surface has a minimal representative. And uh, well, and here we have a nice picture, uh, which, um, uh, uh, gives us um, 
um, uh, some flavor of what's going on. Uh, actually, um, uh, cats are very similar to free groups and virtual nodes are very similar to free groups. And there will be a, a general principle that we are going to uh, cite many times. And this principle is, is if a diagram is complicated enough, then it, then it realizes itself. So uh, how does it go in the case of free groups? Well, having free groups, and actually not only free groups, uh, we can also look at some something like Coxter groups and many other things which are now to be uh, to have a very deep connection with GNK groups, with the virtual knots and so on. Well, uh, we have reduced words, reduced words like that. So uh, this W is a reduced word in A, B, C, D, and they're inverses. So uh, uh, we have uh, uh, reduced means uh, locally minimal. And now uh, the statement uh, or maybe the principle which has to be realized via different theorems and again I refer to the book invariants and pictures the main idea is that uh, um, uh, locally minimal things uh, should be globally minimal and a globally minimal means that any diagram equivalent to that uh, should contain this uh, uh, diagram inside so you having this word, uh, I beg your pardon, I wrote a W uh, equals W twice, but possibly here we should say W prime, maybe uh, a W prime uh, is a word equivalent to uh, W, so equal to W in the group, in the free group. So we can just make some cancellation and see that W leaves inside. Uh, something, something similar happens if we do just one second right a master move and uh, looking at these cats, we can consider it as a toy model. So I assume we have a, a local and minimal diagram of a node. A local and minimal means that there is no chance to make a, a decreasing right and master move, or even we can um, uh, ask for some strong locality, meaning that there is no possibility to make a, a third right and master move. So that uh, um, a, if we do the first step of this step should be increasing, so for example, we have this cat and uh, it wants to, um, uh, it wants to pull uh, um, uh, its tail uh, over, his, um, over his ear. And uh, looking at this diagram, uh, which is represented by a second right master move, we see that the initial diagram or actually equivalent to that uh, can be seen inside the new diagram uh, so we do just some smoothing as in Kaufman states or Havana states, uh, so that the initial diagram lives inside. Uh, so that uh, again, uh, this is an evidence of some uh, locally minimal diagram living inside something. And this works very nicely for virtual knots. And actually, if you revisit, uh, if you revisit uh, maybe curves on surfaces and beautiful works of Hass and Scott, uh, you will see that uh, curves on two surfaces and flat knots uh, have uh, something very similar to that. They have a almost always unique diagram and this unique diagram, uh, well, uh, is more or less uh, well-defined and present everywhere. So in some sense, uh, uh, this uh, uh, new thing is a very well forgotten old thing uh, but now I want to, uh, I, I pretend to say that it should work everywhere in a topology. So locally minimal things should be uh, globally minimal. Of course, you know that in classical knot theory, this doesn't work. For example, we have a culprit knot uh, and having a culprit knot, uh, which is a diagram of, a, um, of, a, of the unknot, uh, uh, we see that there is no chance to make a decreasing move. Nevertheless, uh, nevertheless, uh, this is a diagram of the unknot. So unknot has a more than one local minima. Actually, we do not pretend uh, to, const to prove that everything has um, just one local minimum. Nevertheless, we're going to uh, construct a theory of invariance uh, uh, where in many cases, our invariants uh, have a sort of unique local minimal uh, minimum, which is easy to 
uh, work out, which is easy to compare, something like free, uh, free group valued invariants. Okay, so let's go further. Um, so again, uh, this is uh, the same principle. Uh, a diagram reproduces itself. In fact, um, well, here I don't give a, an exact definition what the parity bracket is. Uh, so the reason is, uh, so there are many reasons for that. Uh, for that, actually, uh, there are many uh, brackets for now. Uh, some of them come from parity, and some others come from uh, uh, come from some other uh, uh, come from some other uh, uh, reasonings. For example. Uh, there are uh, something like Cooper-Berg's bracket. Well, what is a Cooper-Berg bracket? Uh, we have some skin relations and having skin relations, we can, uh, uh, we can try to undo, uh, we can try to uh, undo a knot diagram into some uh, linear combination of polynomials according to some rules. And having drawn uh, a lot of diagrams on the plane, uh, we can uh, take these diagrams and uh, uh, try to find uh, bygones or quadrilaterals or something like that. And uh, for Cooperberg, we can say, okay, uh, this is good because uh, 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 having all a characteristic equal to two, we will find a bygone or quadrilateral. Again, this will be a matter of a separate talk, uh, maybe by one of my colleagues, or maybe I will mention it in a separate talk. Uh, so uh, for classical knots, we can, um, unravel everything and get invariant, uh, get an invariant which is valued in, uh, which is valued in polynomials. For virtual knots or for more complicated objects, this is not the case. Nevertheless, uh, this is even better uh, because we can stop at diagrams which have neither bygones nor quadrilaterals uh, and uh, say that okay, our Diagram is valued in uh, such uh, in such a, uh, our invariant is valued in such a diagram. So you can think of this bracket uh, of K as a sort of state summation. And now uh, I'm not going to uh, uh, say in detail what sort of state summation uh, we have uh, for now. The, for for the present moment, there are many of them. Uh, there are many state summation so that. For many uh, knots uh, uh, which are complicated enough, uh, we have this formula, uh, bracket of k equals k. Uh, and uh, so uh, uh, having this uh, bracket of k equals k or bracket of d equals d. Uh, so you see um, here in the, uh, um, so the left hand side d uh, is, um, I would say, a, a dynamical object. So an object which is, um, uh, up to some moves, maybe a right master moves or something else. And the object uh, and D here is uh, just one diagram with coefficient one. Actually, I'm cheating a little bit. So uh, in the right hand side, we have something like uh, diagrams modular right master two moves. But if we deal with right master two, well, it's uh, um, actually not. Uh, uh, not a great deal. Uh, for uh, having only right master two, we can get a unique minimal representative. And this is something like free groups when we have no relations except obvious ones, a times a to the minus one equals one. So uh, um, uh, uh, we have an object um, up to uh, equivalence relations. So here you can say, okay, we have knots or groups or whatever topological objects which are encoded by moves. And here we have just one representative. And actually this formula leads to lots of consequences, lots of consequences. Um, uh, um, and actually uh, we will touch on these consequences a bit later. Uh, um, so uh, in many cases, we would be happy to look at just one representative of a knot. Uh, just to uh, uh, just to make um, uh, just to make decision of the whole not uh, not isotopy class, uh, and again uh, this happens where uh, this happens in many ways for virtual knots. And uh, well, uh, now I would like to say some words where to take parity for knots. That means how to label crossings uh, which are even or odd. Uh, um, and which is not the case when we work abstractly with classical knots. 
Well, uh, we can have knots in the cylinder and even better if we are on the torus or even better if we are on some uh, higher genus surface and we can land up in knots in the cylinder having uh, uh, just by some maps. Uh, well, actually, whenever we have any sort of uh, Z2 uh, of homology or even Z2 homology, or even if we have a certain um, hypersurface valued in a hypersurface in some moduli space, uh, we have a source of uh, some homology. And this homology can give rise to a certain parity. Actually, looking at notoids, uh, we can do a lot. Um, because notoids usually uh, have a sort of cylinder. Uh, and uh, looking at multi component links, uh, we have um, a lot of uh, parities which come from uh, jumping from one component to another. And actually, if we want to deal not with braids and not with uh, knots and links, for braids, uh, such a theory is well established, and we have G and K groups. And actually, we can um, describe braids again following this book uh, in variants and pictures. And actually, uh, we have to uh, make uh, to take some steps from knots, uh, maybe knots, then links, then braids, or maybe you know how to make uh, three steps at once from knots to free knots. Well, there are there should be many ways, uh, and I want to concentrate just on the tip of the iceberg, which will be. Uh, which will uh, correspond to free knots and their invariance in free groups. Actually, uh, here are some immediate applications, as I promised. Uh, so, uh, well, for knots, usually um, invariants are in favor um, if uh, they can detect invertibility or mutation. Actually, uh, here we have something which is immediate. Uh, so if our bracket uh, is valued in something oriented, like Cooperberg bracket. So Cooperberg bracket is, uh, uh, gives us some uh, oriented graphs. Then we have immediately that if uh, K uh, is not um, uh, equal to K bar and the bracket of K is K and bracket of K bar is K bar, uh, then, uh, K, uh, then just looking at uh, two representatives, we see that knots are uh, not, uh, then uh, uh, by K bar, I mean uh, the inverse knot. Uh, then we see that the inverse knot is not uh, the same as the initial knot. And actually mute, for mutation of knots, we have the same idea. So, okay, we make a mutation and the bracket, if the brackets are not equal to each other, in many cases, we know that uh, the knots are not equal to each other, not uh, equivalent to each other by using moves. Actually, now I want to mention some applications which may potentially cause some problems. And uh, I want to uh, mention some obstacles uh, which happen here. And uh, in fact, I want to say some words about how to overcome these obstacles. So um, actually, um, we can uh, have a knot. For example, uh, we can try to make a cobordism. And in fact, there are some works of mine with uh, Denise Fedasev, uh, more or less about uh, the following thing, for an odd knot having a cobordism, uh, time shall unfold what plighted cunning hides, uh, in the sense that having uh, a cobordism uh, with uh, um, uh, some foldings, uh, these foldings can be unfolded in the sense that uh, having a cobordism uh, with uh, uh, just uh, maybe, uh, maybe cusps and triple points we can get uh, something with uh, without cusps and triple points. Uh, well, but this is just uh, in very special cases. And in, fa in fact, um, in fact, uh, so here I want to say about some uh, some potential problems. In fact, if we want to uh, deal uh, with the classical knots, uh, we know for sure that classical knots uh, do commute. And if we try to uh, construct invariants of classical knots in some non-commutative objects, uh, these invariants will presumably be uh, non-homomorphic. Uh, so uh, there will be uh, some maps which uh, um, break down the homomorphisms. And uh, so this is, uh, um, this is some a priori uh, uh, reason. Uh, but actually, there is another reason uh, why this might not work. 
And the other reason is that, uh, well, if we have a knot, we can go along this knot. And this knot is a sort of characteristic loop in the moduli space. We can think that we have characteristic loops instead of characteristic classes as people do. And uh, well, uh, if we deal with, not with isotopies, but with bordism, sometimes it happens that the circle splits into many pieces. And uh, if we split into sufficiently many pieces, the non-commutativity can go away. So we should be very careful about, uh, about uh, having, uh, having just one piece and one loop, one circle in the moduli space. And this is why uh, it's uh, much harder to get cobordism invariance than just uh, invariance of isotopy. Actually, uh, well, now if there are students or some other people here uh, who would like to have problems for research, uh, PhD students, okay. Uh, now I want to say that uh, having any structure more or less uh, uh, which gives us something uh, in moduli spaces. Well, Legendre and Simplicial, Calabiao may be complex on some other. Uh, we can uh, get uh, we can get new parities and uh, and uh, having that uh, we can get. Uh, so, for example, if we consider Legendre and knots, their moduli space is much uh, more uh, interesting than just uh, the moduli space of usual knots, topological knots because we have some structure. And actually there was uh, some very initial paper of, my, of mine with Wang Jian. And in that paper we had, uh, in that paper, uh, we did something for complex structures. So uh, if uh, some people need a project, uh, so this can be a project. And just a couple of words about uh, Kirby theory and uh, uh, free groups. And actually for free groups, um, uh, uh, for many folks, you can ask, how can it work? Well, more or less, we can do the following. Uh, so if we have circles with some words in some finite alphabet, so we can say, okay, we have a large free groups and uh, generators correspond to some e odd objects. Uh, then more or less, we uh, take some free group quotient by a, by a collection of words. And having this collection of words, uh, we can uh, take the quotient and uh, more or less the second Kirby move is when we replace A and B by A, B and B. Of course, there will be lots of obstacles to overcome and this is at least a PhD project. Uh, of course, from knots to three manifolds, we have to overcome a lot. Well, uh, possible further applications. Two knots and for space and more generally any codimensional knots. So here uh, the main um, uh, motto is uh, that having something of codimension one, we have a fundamental group and having something um, which is not simply connected, this is good for the moduli space. And then we can try to invent, uh, then we can try to invent a way of studying this. Um, uh, well, uh, here uh, again, I have to apologize for referring to groups G and K and some other talks uh, maybe still to be given uh, or, or maybe some previous talks when we're discussing some um, uh, moduli spaces and uh, for example, uh, some uh, tangent bundles or other bundles and actually uh, for complex structures, we can uh, consider such modular spaces as I mentioned one, uh, with one Gian. So keywords, so we can have groups G and K and gamma and K. Uh, so, uh, well, actually uh, the motto is, it's very easy to find some codimension one properties and having something of codimension one, we can get say, some hypersurfaces and having some hypersurfaces, we can get uh, say, um, we can get, um, for example, um, for example, uh, uh, some parity. Well, and then if we are lucky and if we have uh, uh, something like braids, uh, we can do uh, we can do a free group value invariance. And of course, these are subjects of other talks. And of course, uh, well, any other modular spaces and algebra. If we have some algebraic structure, it's easy to get many. Uh, many uh, fancy codimension one things. 
And actually, uh, we can also study uh, lots of groups by using topology and a lot about that as written in our book, Invariants and Pictures. For example, um, for example, we have a lot to do with Coxton groups. And uh, the motto is somehow uh, non-commutative mathematics. Uh, recently, um, um, there was a brilliant talk of um, uh, 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 Jones, uh, 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 teacher um, in uh, uh, Switzerland, Alain Kohn, uh, who was talking about non-commutative mathematics. Uh, well, and uh, he was trying, um, and uh, uh, there was some idea to make some something non-commutative in the level of characteristic classes. Uh, to have some non uh, non commutative uh, um, structures, non commutative maybe polynomials, and uh, we are actually uh, going towards the same goal, uh, uh, but uh, our uh, approach is much easier. So we want just to uh, take products instead of sums, and if we take products along lines, these products uh, will become non commutative. Uh, well, and uh, actually. Again, I mentioned GMK groups. And uh, now, uh, in fact, categorification is here. Uh, 20 or 25 years ago, um, uh, Mikhail uh, Kovanov and uh, Peter Oshvat and Zoltan Sabo gave us categorifications. Categorifications of the Kaufman bracket and categorification of the Alexander polynomial. And categorification is something which make our invariance um, category. Well, um, um, having just a number, uh, it's a bit boring. We can say, okay, we have, uh, say, this uh, not uh, uh, has an invariant which is equal to five, and the other not uh, has an invariant which is equal to three. But actually, we cannot map five to three, and uh, five and three are just different numbers. So mostly we can solve only problems like how to uh, distinguish between distinct knots and not many other problems. But if we want to make our theory functorial, uh, we, want, uh, we uh, need uh, something more, for example, homology theory. And there was a very famous joke due to Luke Kaufman uh, that categorification can be thought of uh, something when we associate cats uh, to objects. So we have invariants uh, where we uh, count some cats and cats may be diagrams of something. And having diagrams of something, uh, well, maybe with coefficients, these diagrams uh, contain much more information than just linear space. Well, three is three and five is five. And three-dimensional space is a three-dimensional space. And we can map a three-dimensional space to a five-dimensional space. But if we draw one cat and we draw another cat, uh, we can say draw uh, some, uh, um, uh, well, uh, some dynamical system between these two cats. And we can draw some two dimensional things and we can draw, we can get a cinema about uh, cat's life, uh, how cat behaves in a usual type space. And as uh, Professor Cohn said, uh, well, um, uh, non-commutativity appears when we have not only space, but also time. And when uh, events cannot be repeated, uh, uh, well, actually, uh, non-commutativity appears when we have cats. And well, um, just believe me that cats can be converted into some things like homology or maybe gradings or something like that. So we can, out of cats, we can do a lot. Again, so uh, maybe after half an hour, we are still uh, discussing some further applications. Well, again, uh, this is something about a parity bracket when we take uh, some linear combination of something. Again, we mentioned some locally minimal objects which turn out to be globally minimal under some circumstances. Um, and uh, actually, uh, we have uh, uh, sometimes uh, possibilities to get cobordism invariants. And actually, one more thing which has to be mentioned here, which is a very uh, conceptual issue, is that uh, virtual knots behave like links. So having a virtual knot diagram, we can think that uh, it's odd. It has a natural uh, parity projection and natural 
parity uh, um, covering. So some, uh, some odd crossing can be, behave like crossings between different components. And this says that uh, knots behave like uh, links. And this is, um, uh, 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 these are, uh, this is very good news. And actually, uh, well, uh, there are some step towards uh, uh, saying that knots behave like braids. Uh, well, this is much uh, more complicated, and this is still not unfinished because uh, there was um, uh, there are some other issues to overcome. Um, and actually, uh, well, parity appears whenever we have whenever we have something like Z two homology. And now I want to say that free group free knots are similar to free groups. And now uh, maybe I forgot to give uh, uh, to give a very uh, initial definition. The definition of a free knot, uh, but we can uh, we can uh, consider free knot as follows. So well, uh, so what are classical knots? So classical knots are just uh, uh, planar uh, Gauss diagrams, uh, modular rider master moves, which re um, uh, uh, do not affect planarity. So we have uh, planar modular right and master moves. So um, uh, if we have any Gauss diagrams, uh, modular right and any right and master moves, uh, we get um, uh, say uh, virtual knots, and this uh, is uh, maybe one of the initial definition of virtual knots. But you see uh, diagrams uh, say. Diagrams of the trefoil or diagrams of any other knot have something like uh, uh, signs and arrows, where signs is responsible for the local right number of crossing and arrows are responsible for who is over, who is under. This means that any arrow has two bits of additional information. And uh, free knots are just unsigned. Uh, um, mm. Uh, so free knots are just uh, uh, pure Gauss diagrams without any uh, 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 without any labels and without any arrows and signs. Modular rider master moves. And actually, here I have to give credit to uh, Vladimir Georgievich Turaev, who first invented uh, free knots. Uh, under the name of homotopy classes uh, uh, of Gauss words. So he was um, looking at um, these free knots uh, as uh, some uh, object represented by words. So uh, I, I hope you can see my, uh, you can see this sheet of paper with, uh, which is uh, an addition to, uh, which is an addition to my slides. So here is uh, this sheet of paper. So here we have a Gauss diagram of the trefoil. So, and here is the definition of free knots. And actually to arrive, uh, um, uh, considered free knots and uh, he thought uh, that they were trivial. And actually uh, this uh, very simple logic turned out not to be just non-trivial, but it turned out to, have, um, uh, to uh, have a lot to do with lots of um, new invariants people never saw before. And these invariants are something like cats. I mean, something like knot diagrams. And in fact, um, in fact, uh, free knots are very similar to free groups uh, in the sense that we have some reductions. Uh, so actually this is not quite the case because for uh, uh, free groups, uh, for free knots, uh, sometimes we have uh, even ones and sometimes, uh, well, some other effects appear, uh, but more or less if we have a free group, uh, then we have a minimal representative of, as we saw cats and we have reductions. Uh, well, a simple reductions are nothing but the second rider master moves. And possibly, well, in some other groups, we could have some other are relations which could play the role of the first right and master move over the second right and master moves. Uh, but uh, we can look at reduced words, uh, which are minimal representative uh, uh, representatives. And actually, actually some, uh, it happens very often that 
local and minimal words, reduced words are um, global and minimal. Uh, we do not pretend to uh, solve all problems and classify uh, all objects. Nevertheless, there was some word and uh, there was some work of mine uh, an almost complete classification of free nuts uh, where um, uh, some, um, something was left a little bit and this can uh, serve as a sort of project for uh, students. Uh, but uh, what I'm uh, principally interested in is not in uh, some complete classification of objects, but I'm very much interested in uh, um, constructing maps from some well-known topological objects to free nuts or maybe free groups, which behave like links or sometimes they behave like braids. Okay, and uh, some steps toward the goal, actually free nuts uh, uh, turn out to be, um, are mapped to element of free groups and compact free nuts are conjugacy classes of free groups. In fact, uh, this uh, was, um, uh, Hosted on the archive uh, on December the uh, on December the last day, uh, the, uh, the 31st of the last year, and uh, actually before that we had pictures, uh, but we didn't have groups. And uh, by many reasons, uh, groups are um, more recognized than pictures in the sense that, uh, well. Uh, some people uh, know how to say map groups and how to make uh, make uh, homomorphisms. Uh, well, I like pictures more, uh, but nevertheless, today I want to concentrate on free nodes and invariance valued in free groups. So the realization plan. Uh, well, uh, this is uh, something more uh, than just for free nodes. Uh, so assume we have a sort of Gauss diagram. And uh, this Gauss diagram or something else uh, has some labels. These labels may come from something like homology. Well, uh, then uh, we can have some moves. So uh, not theorists, noters can uh, think in terms of right master moves. And of course, uh, these homology classes uh, should uh, obey uh, some uh, relations on these right master moves. And actually, these relations are terribly difficult to uh, uh, find for classical knots, for classical knots in their classical uh, interpretation. Uh, but for free knots, uh, they are more or less for free. And uh, uh, then having uh, uh, something like labels. So here we have a um, here we have a various term, uh, types of crossings: L1, L2, also, so on. So we can construct a free group, a free group, or maybe, uh, well, free product of Zs, or maybe uh, some uh, group, uh, which is a, pro a free product of uh, cyclic groups, which is not worse uh, in the sense that it is very much non-commutative on one hand. And on the other hand, uh, this group is, uh, 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 these, uh, these group elements are very easy to compare. And so we can get powerful, um, and uh, non-easy invariants. And uh, well, then we can try to prove that when we apply equivalent, uh, say, right a master, uh, then uh, different generators do not commute. And actually, uh, this is quite, uh, uh, quite a complicated issue. Uh, well, for example, it may happen that if uh, some crossing undergoes uh, some change, um, uh, um, if some crossing undergoes some right a master move, something bad can happen. So uh, allow me to give, just, uh, give you just some toy model uh, why it, is, uh, it doesn't work immediately for classical knots if we try to do something very simple. So assume uh, we have a crossing and we want to associate with this crossing something um, uh, and we want to associate um, with this uh, crossing um, uh, something like linking number. Actually, many parities come from homology or, uh, and uh, homologies can come from some intersections or maybe linking number or uh, some uh, mapping degree or from some classical topology actually. Uh, well, and uh, we can try to uh, do something simplest uh, in this uh, situation. 
So here we have uh, some, um, uh, here we have uh, some uh, third rider master mode. So we have two diagrams and here, mm, oh, uh, did I, oh, uh, possibly I have drawn a delta move. Uh, I beg your pardon. I really meant, uh, I really meant the third rider master move we have when we have uh, some upper uh, line and some lower line and some line uh, in between. So we have three branches of a knot and I'm very interested in the situation uh, when um, we have uh, this middle branch uh, to go through the crossing between uh, the crossing between uh, 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 the upper line and the lower line. So here is the third right master move. I apologize for uh, for a small mistake uh, in the previous picture. Here is the third right master move. Uh, so what is good? Uh, what uh, what can we try to do and what is bad. Uh, so if we look at this thing, uh, we can say, okay, we have this crossing and assume this is a knot or a link. Then we say, okay, um, if this is a knot, we can uh, take the two ears, which appear when we uh, uh, take the right half on this crossing and the left half of this crossing. So if we undo it, what, uh, if we smooth it like that, uh, we get something like two components of a link. We can take their linking number, for example, and we take the parity of this linking number. This turns out to be a, well, this looks like a very good candidate for some parity. But the problem is when some red line goes in between uh, the upmost crossing and the, um, the, upper, uh, the upper line and the lower line, uh, this quantity changes by one. So we can say, okay, uh, this linking number changes by one. And if we are dealing with a parity and something changes by one, so something becomes hopeless. And actually this is not hopeless because we can uh, deal with other projections of knots. And this is why I mentioned knots in the cylinder. And actually a lot has been written about that in the uh, book in variants and pictures. So when we look at knots from different points of view. Uh, for example, when we project them not to adjust to the plane, but we project to some uh, more uh, interesting surface like a cylinder, or uh, uh, then uh, we can extract such uh, good things like parities or maybe labels. So crossings can be labeled. Crossings can be labeled and then they undergo, uh, they undergo some moves. And if we are happy, uh, we can get uh, in, uh, we can get something like um, uh, um, uh, uh, like non-commuting generators. Uh, but here you see it's again a complicated pro uh, a complicated thing because if we have two crossings and say one crossing uh, is um, labeled by A and the other crossing is labeled by B and uh, they undergo, uh, uh, say, some third right master moves, uh, some third right master move. And even if we are happy and A uh, stays A and B stays B, then we get a relation of the, of the form AB equals BA. Uh, and this is not what we wanted because we wanted just the opposite. We wanted to construct some non-commutative geometry and non-commutative where uh, generators do not commute with each other. Actually, a lot is done for braids, and you can read about that in our book or in our uh, paper on the archive, which can be easily distributed. Uh, well, um, uh, my uh, um, our book with uh, um, Denis Fedaseev, Kim Sanjon, and Igor Nikon. Uh, but actually, uh, now just working with three knots, I will try to show you how we can make uh, things to be non-commutative and give rise to free groups. Okay, mm, well, uh, this is actually the only relation we like. And we actually do not like relations like, uh, say, uh, AJ equals one. And actually the relation AJ equals one, uh, when some generator equals one, uh, uh, this is possibly uh, the main source of all problems in constructing complicated invariants 
in one turn for nodes. Say, um, if we want to construct an invariant of links, it's simpler than nodes. Even Gauss knew in 18th century uh, that we can uh, get a linking number. Well, possibly Gauss uh, got his formula uh, by using some electromagnetic integration, uh, but actually uh, we can do it by summation of uh, uh, right numbers between two components. And again, if we have um, a two component link, we can see, okay, we have crossings between one components and they are somehow bad. Uh, and we have cr uh, crossing uh, between different components mixed one and they are much better. Why are they better? Well, they are better because uh, they do not cancel just um, at once as uh, the first Rider master move. And talking in the language of uh, uh, free uh, of uh, uh, um, moduli spaces, uh, we can say as follows. Uh, well, we have a complicated moduli space of high dimension. And uh, for this moduli space, uh, we can have uh, uh, something like cusps or maybe something like final points. And we can say, okay, we have some, something like a surface, hypersurface, and we want to construct a sort of parity. And um, sometimes this hypersurface has final points. It's not compact. And uh, then if we want to take some intersection index, then we can go around the surface and uh, make a detour and uh, the number of crossings uh, turns out not to be invariant, even modular Z2. And this is the, uh, this is the reason why uh, we have so many problems for Rider Master 1 move. So for knots, we do not have uh, an obvious, um, an obvious um, uh, intersection number. Um, and actually, if we have some framing or some uh, Legendrian structure or whatever structure, we can immediately get a sort of self-linking number. Uh, again, uh, we have a homology, hence we get, get parity. And now we want to get something, not just commutative, if we take a path and intersect, uh, but non-commutative. So we take a path and want to write down a, uh, write down a word uh, in three groups. Uh, so uh, maybe uh, this can give rise uh, to some problems about groups and in fact, uh, maybe people should not only concentrate on relations for words and groups, uh, but they can also deal with relations when three pieces of groups are involved. Uh, well, uh, because this originates from Rider Master 3, but I don't want to uh, um, concentrate on this. Uh, and uh, generally, we want to pass from homology to uh, homotopy, fundamental groups, and we want to pass from abelian groups to free groups. And um, uh, now I want to uh, take uh, one very simple invariant, very simple invariant of three knots, uh, which can be thought of as a toy model. Nevertheless, this invariant turns out to be a cobordism invariant for three knots. Uh, in fact, uh, by cobordism of three knots, we can mean the, um, we can mean the following. Well, a three knot uh, is just a, a graph of balance C4, a regular graph of balance C4 where it each vertex we have some opposite edge structure. Of course, modular Rider master moves. And uh, so this is, um, this is a circle which has a self intersection. And uh, when asking whether we can, uh, whether this is slice, we can say, okay, this is a circle and can this circle be uh, um, the boundary of some two disc? So we can say, okay, uh, can we fold, uh, fold it and intersect a two disk somehow in order to have this on the boundary? And it turns out that there is a very simple invariant and uh, this invariant can be uh, described as just an integer number. Uh, but initially I described it as an element um, in the infinite, di in the infinite um, uh, dihedral group. And, uh, the, and now I want to show uh, you some three steps. One step is when we count just some numbers and get a number. 
Uh, then I would say, uh, well, I I'm not going to prove that it is uh, that it is some cobordism invariant uh, or that is license obstruction. Well, uh, it's a, um, a result a result of long ago, maybe nine years ago or something like that. It's published a long ago. It's published in books. Uh, but I want to uh, make some steps showing that from uh, just numbers, we can go to groups and then go to non-commutative groups, having nothing by pair but parity. So the first step when we count something and get some integer value of this thing. And actually, uh, this something will tell us about uh, some new signs for virtual crossings. In fact, virtual uh, knots have some cobordism variants which uh, originate from, from some signs, uh, which uh, actually originate from right numbers. But we can have some other signs um, uh, besides right numbers. and. Um, um, independent from them. Uh, and then I want to construct an infinite group. Uh, infinite, actually, this group uh, has more or less the same Kelly graph, so uh, which is a strip uh, or maybe infinite uh, a staircase or infinite railroad. And uh, so putting uh, generators in one way, we get uh, um, the infinite dihedral group. And putting generates uh, generators in the other way, we get the free product of two copies of Z2. Actually, this group is non-commutative, uh, but from the point of view of Gromov's uh, theory, uh, this is more or less commutative. Uh, if we look at this group from the infinity, uh, this looks like a straight line. Uh, this means that this group has a commutative subgroup of a finite index, and this is not very much impressive. Uh, and actually, our invariants turn out to be nothing but just a number. But this was the initial way of um, uh, the initial way of inventing this invariant, how I understood it. And then maybe some years later, I, took, uh, I understood that. Well, then there were some attempts to get something like what I call parity hierarchy. And um, actually, I got uh, maybe some integer lattice, which were uh, collections of integer numbers, but still it was non uh, it was more or less a commutative, an abelian group, almost a abelian group, or maybe a group having an abelian subgroup of a finite index. But now I want to construct a genuinely infinite group, uh, a genuine non abelian group. Actually, in order to do that, I can I I may just try to get rid of uh, uh, these relations. So actually, I may just uh, try to uh, say that we have uh, a sort of signs for uh, Bs, so that some Bs are positive and some Bs are negative. And if we do that way, uh, then we can uh, say, okay, uh, uh, the free group of uh, the free group of two, um, um, uh, the free group of two Zs uh, is genuinely non-commutative group, which contains uh, 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 the free product of uh, three elements or five elements or infinitely many value uh, elements. So uh, the free product of two uh, Zs is uh, a very powerful group. Uh, and actually here we have not just B, and we, but we also have A. So uh, the third step will be uh, genuinely much more complicated. Uh, so allow me to um, uh, start um, um, going into the detail. So I assume we have a diagram, a Gauss diagram. So we say that two chords intersect, but for me, it's better to say that two chords are linked because formally two chords are just chords on the graph and formally as um, edges of the graph, they have no intersection. They are linked if their endpoints alternate. And uh, actually, uh, sometimes we can say that uh, two chords uh, are linked if they're, uh, and then uh, their intersection is one in Z2, or sometimes we say that uh, it's zero in Z2 if they're not linked. Um, and now uh, a key definition is that uh, a chord is even if it intersects uh, evenly many chords uh, and or linked with evenly many chords and odd otherwise. And this is uh, principally uh, what differs virtual knots um, from uh, classical knots. Uh, even Gauss knew that all chords, uh, all chords for classical Gauss diagrams of classical knots are even. And actually, Gauss was making a mistake. 
he thought that even diagrams, all the diagrams with all chords even are always planar. Uh, and actually this was not a sufficient conditions for re being planar. And uh, we know when uh, great people make mistakes, sometimes it gives rise to theories. And actually, uh, uh, as far uh, to the best of my knowledge, the first sufficient condition for a Gauss diagram to realize uh, something on the plane was due to Max Dane. And maybe the whole 20th century uh, turned out to be a century of rediscovering uh, um, old uh, um, criteria and finding new criteria. And some of criteria was found by myself in the beginning of uh, this century. And actually, uh, 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 this says that uh, parity theory does not work for classical diagrams immediately. Actually, we have to invent some new parity. Uh, but uh, if we look just at Schreidermeister moves, we can see that uh, parity satisfies some nice axioms, uh, and these axioms go as follows. Uh, if we have a chord, then it doesn't change the parity uh, if we undergo the third Reidemeister move. This means that it um, uh, um, uh, switches um, in incidences with two cards. So it switches so this is parity twice. Uh, so the parity remains as it was. Well, if two chords are canceled by right master move, then they are adjacent. So they have the same parity. And the chord participating the right master one move is even. Well, because it intersects nothing. And also the number of odd chords of a Gauss diagram is even. Well, because just uh, the number of uh, um, Odd, vertice, odd valent vertices of a graph is even. Uh, we have an intersection graph. Uh, well, and now I want to uh, make further distinction between chords, um, between chords of, um, um, between odd chords. Um, and I want to make uh, odd chords of the first type uh, and odd chords of the second type. Oh, excuse me, here I wrote sort, not type. Well, um, I beg your pardon here. And uh, second type. So, uh, okay. Uh, so uh, the first type, if both chords are in odd positions and uh, uh, the chord is linked with evenly many chords. So this is the first type. Um, uh, with evenly many even chords. Maybe this can uh, seem to uh, you a bit uh, complicated. Uh, so otherwise we say that it is second type. Uh, now I want to associate a sort of word uh, with a diagram and this word to be associated, uh, this word to be associated will be a word in three letters. Uh, uh, um, actually, uh, these three letters, uh, these three letters will be um, A or B or B prime. Uh, in fact, the idea will be, uh, the idea will be A are red chords, uh, B and B prime are uh, chords of two types, uh, chords of two types. Uh, and in fact, um, and in fact, um, somehow we can count chords of B and count chords of B prime uh, and uh, subtract somehow uh, one sort of chords from another sort. And uh, this will turn out to be an invariant. Uh, so uh, just a bit later, I will give you this invariant. So uh, we can count two quantities and these two quantities will turn out to be an invariant uh, of a diagram. And moreover, it will turn out to be an invariant of um, cobordisms or free knots. So if we have some free knot, uh, 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 some two free knots spanned by a cylinder between them, then uh, these numbers will be uh, equal, maybe up to psi. So red things are uh, even and uh, black things are odd. And we can look at the positions of the beginning of the chord. It can be odd. And uh, why do I mean uh, that, there, uh, that we take two things, two bits of information, the beginning, and uh, uh, the fact how many chords uh, is intersected with this one, uh, well, the idea is as follows. Uh, if a chord undergoes the third Reidemeister move, and this chord is 
odd, then we can look at this third Reitermeister move. And for the third Reitermeister move with a one chord odd, the number of odd chords participating in this third Reitermeister move is even. And even this means two, uh, because we can have either two or zero. So we have one odd chord and it toggles its adjacencies with an even chord and with an odd chord. So it changes its adjacencies. Uh, with an even, so if we just take adjacencies, uh, then the type will be switched. But this odd chord will uh, switch its uh, initial point and the final point. So, for example, if we look at this chord, which is the chord one three with both endpoints odd, uh, then if it undergoes some right master three moves, uh, well, it can have uh, initial and final points at even positions, but uh, at the expense of uh, uh, changing adjacencies with even oddly many odd chords or oddly many even chords. Uh, never mind. And in fact, so we can uh, we can count uh, this number of chords. So initially, this count was uh, multiplied by two. And now we can have this theorem, and this theorem can be checked by writing master moves step by step. Uh, well, I'm here. I meant long knots, which means that we uh, uh, straighten out uh, uh, a um, free knot uh, by taking a, a, the initial point. And actually, uh, long free knots are not the same as compact free knots. And uh, this theorem can be one of evidences of that because having a free knot, and if we start counting this thing from some other point, this quantity may change its sign. So if we have some uh, knot where the invariant uh, it has non-zero value, uh, so we, have, we, can, uh, so we can break our free knot into, uh, at some other point when this value will change its sign. So this means that uh, long free knots and um, compact free knots are not the same. And again, this is an, uh, a result of something like uh, nine years ago or so. Uh, yeah, now I want to make a second step. And uh, so this second step means that I want to, um, uh, that I want to represent this invariant uh, by using, uh, by using uh, a non-abelian group. And uh, here downstairs, you have a Kelly graph of the group in, qu uh, in question. So possibly I can make some magnification of this group. So here is, uh, here is the Kelly graph. And you see that uh, this is the infinite staircase or infinite railroad. Uh, so we have uh, the element one. Uh, all generators are, as in the case of Coxter groups, all generators, uh, there are three of them are uh, just reflections. So the square is one, so we don't need arrows. And here we have a, um, uh, like uh, for vertical ones and B and B prime uh, uh, alternate horizontally. So of course I write the same to the left. And so the relation we have here is just A B equals B prime A. Uh, and so, so this is exactly the group we had here. Uh, so, uh, so exactly the group we had here, the group G. Okay, uh, and of course the squares of generators are equal to one. And if we uh, draw uh, this um, uh, example uh, like that, uh, so red ones are even ones and we have A. And if we follow the rules given uh, above and uh, denote uh, the word of by uh, uh, P of K, uh, then this word will be uh, mm, will give us an invariant value in this group. Actually, this invariant uh, will, well, the number of A's uh, will be even. So this invariant will be some point uh, on this uh, uh, horizontal line. So actually this will be a number. People can prove that this is a number divisible by four easily. Uh, I conjecture that this may be divisible by eight. I don't know uh, whether it's uh, related to some results in topology when we have some bare count of something to be divisible by eight. Uh, but anyway, this uh, uh, invariant 
though valued in a group, it turns out not to be very much impressive and turns out not to be very much non-abelian. Nevertheless, here is a way, uh, here is a way um, of uh, getting, uh, well, uh, this is the theorem, uh, this is a formal theorem that this is okay. Uh, so we have Reitermeister one a squared equals one, Reitermeister two gives us something squared equals one, and Reitermeister three uh, can give us either trivial relations uh, like uh, BB prime uh, equals BB prime, uh, or it can give rise to a relation which is in the list. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we can um, justify a little bit our Bs and uh, make some further signs for them. And this will give rise to a genuinely non-abelian group. Uh, so that's the idea. Mm. So here is the group. Here is the new group B, G prime. Uh, so here we drop uh, the relations B uh, squared uh, equals B prime squared equals one. So we have B and B prime to the minus one. Uh, so we cancel these relations. And actually, so here is some philosophy maybe. Uh, so um, uh, actually, we can ask whether um, so uh, whether just bare groups can give some invariance of something. Uh, but we should note that sometimes our invariants are not invariants of homomorphisms. I mean that if we concatenate two uh, knots, uh, it doesn't immediately mean that we can co concatenate two elements of the group. So sometimes something happens, uh, uh, well, something like twisted homomorphism. So sometimes, uh, so this means that we can still have some hope to get invariants of classical knots valued in just this group, uh, valued in just this group, uh, which, is, which has actually no commutativity. Um, and um, so uh, if we go uh, here, I want to uh, get uh, this group G, and uh, uh, G, uh, excuse me, G prime, and this G prime has uh, exponential growth because it contains the free group with two generators. And uh, um, uh, so uh, the rule for the rule for associating B and B prime is just the same as before, but we want to uh, we want uh, to uh, take something in different positions, namely, uh, namely, uh, if we have uh, letters B and letters uh, B prime, uh, we want to put uh, some negative exponents somewhere. Namely, uh, if we have this B uh, on even position, we just write down a B to the minus one. This uh, is not a homomorphism. And this is some operation uh, which actually can be described uh, by using some twisted product uh, or maybe uh, a twisted pr uh, product with Z2. Uh, but in fact, uh, actually, uh, we can just um, go through the proof and go through all um, uh, theorems that we had before uh, and see that, say, for Reitermeister 3 move, uh, everything works well with these signs. So, for example, if we had A, B equals to B prime A, so this is one of the relations. So then uh, we can have uh, the relation, uh, well, for example, a, b, and b is the, in the odd position. So then instead of b, uh, we just write b to the minus. So a, b to the minus equals uh, b prime a. And this is what we need. And now instead of just b, b equals one, uh, we have b, b to the minus one equals one. And notice that for Reitermeister two, for Reitermeister one, we have only a squared equals one, not b squared. So uh, those which are canceled by Reitermeister two have different exponents. And that's why we get an invariant in a genuinely uh, non-commutative group. And actually, uh, actually, uh, if we have uh, the, uh, the connected sum, uh, so then uh, it behaves like uh, some uh, twisted product uh, up to some automorphism. This is not uh, very much surprising. And uh, what we really get here is that uh, 
more or less free knot invertibility. This is what uh, this is uh, what was known a long ago, and free uh, any sorts of free knot mutations. It was also known a long ago, and actually uh, some news are that uh, uh, we see that free knots almost never commute because, well, if we have uh, two different words uh, and they're very much different and uh, mm, if we take the first and the second, maybe up to some automorphism, it's not the same as the second and then the first. Uh, and so these are news, uh, new things that free knots almost never commute. Well, Almost or not almost well, of course, if we have powers of the same knot, they do not commute. And for virtual long knots, it was proved by uh, uh, myself and Chrisman. Um, actually, uh, finally, it was established by Chrisman um, uh, that um, uh, uh, virtual knots do not commute unless we have some uh, classical summons and uh, well, some obvious commutativities of uh, distinct uh, powers of the same knot. And actually, I think the same works for free knots. Um, well, we do not have it just here because incidentally it can happen that different uh, free knots have the same value of the invariant, but I think uh, it, it will be the goal. But uh, in any case, uh, you see, a genuine instance of non-abelian invariance of some objects, of some topological objects. And this is the final step of our uh, tower uh, uh, when we can start uh, with topological objects. Well, what can we do? Uh, what can we do next? So of course, almost never commute. What else? Uh, well, uh, the groups uh, uh, constructed here can be enhanced. Uh, but, but we can say I'm lazy or this work is boring because actually there are parity hierarchy. Uh, having, um, having odd chords, uh, they are odd, uh, and there is something like odd projection when we delete odd chords. And this odd projection is, uh, parity projection is well-defined, and this well-defined projection give, uh, uh, gives rise to a distinction between even chords. Some even chords become odd after deleting odd chords. And they, uh, well, uh, they are, uh, for example, they cannot participate in Rydermeister 1. So uh, there, are, um, uh, there is a hierarchy of oddness. And this hierarchy of oddness gives uh, lots of new generators. And we can do a lot of things, by the way. Uh, this parity uh, projection uh, led to uh, two uh, purely combinatorial proofs of uh, two facts. Classical knots embed into uh, virtual knots and ver uh, classical links embed into virtual links. Oh, no, not links, uh, groups, excuse me. Uh, oh, braids, pardon me. Uh, classical braids embed into virtual braids and uh, we do not deal with any uh, complete invariant, uh, but we just have projections from virtual not objects to classical objects. And these projections uh, just deal with uh, um, eliminating odd things until we have nothing odd. And when we have nothing odd, we have something classical. Uh, so our invariant calculated by sign is certainly a slice subtraction, and actually we can do much more. And uh, well, of course, uh, two and three give us lots of projects for students. So those who like uh, um, uh, working with groups uh, can get lots of groups and they can uh, give invariants of isotopy and invariants of cobordism, whatever. Uh, so um, of course, uh, uh, from virtual knots to, uh, from free knots to virtual knots, we can uh, easily get by adding, uh, by adding, uh, by upgrading, uh, crossings with uh, adding a right number and over under structure. It's not uh, complicated. And maybe some words about further problems. Actually, uh, there is a general problem about uh, embedding of one category into the other category. Uh, uh, the main example here uh, is uh, that classical knots embed into virtual knots. In fact, uh, the reason behind that is the existence of parity. So more or less, uh, from the naive point of view, classicals have no parity. And 
from the naive point of view, there is a, a projection. There is a parity projection and uh, which allows us to uh, get invariance. Actually, uh, it, it has more consequences. Uh, um, it has more consequences of, say, cobordism, virtual cobordism genus of classical knots uh, cannot be smaller than classical cobordism genus. Uh, but actually, um, but actually, um, we can uh, philosophically uh, think like that. Uh, that parity is the existence of some homology, and some homology means uh, of, uh, some non-planarity, some impossibility to draw something on the plane. Uh, so more or less, uh, more or less, if we have some categories, maybe of graphs and uh, non-planar graphs, so uh, some easy objects should uh, embed into uh, more complicated objects because there should be a projection from more complicated ones to easy ones uh, by um, just removing parity by some parity projection. So parity is a sort of planarity. Uh, well, uh, so, uh, uh, so again, uh, revisit and revisit and revisit and we did the Gauss diagrams and uh, we have uh, um, some something like chords and we can eliminate uh, chords which are odd from some parity not necessarily Gaussian parity but some other parity and so uh, this uh, uh, projection lends uh, to some classical objects because the number of chords is finite. So having something finite, we cannot project uh, infinitely many times. And if there is no parity, then it's a classical one. Well, uh, so here I want to, uh, so here I want to um, give some advertising of a brilliant work by Torbar Natan, Zuzha Nadancho, and Roland van der Veen. Uh, so actually, uh, they use uh, uh, some work with objects like um, um, which have early over and early under. And um, my problem here, is there any projection from tangles to braids? Well, uh, the problem is as follows. Assume we have, um, assume we have whatever tangles with n ends on the top and n ends on the bottom. Can we straighten them in order to have some, in order to have some, uh, order of crossings. So here we have to get rid of, uh, here we have to get rid of um, uh, something like called Escher waterfalls. And uh, actually the absence of Escher waterfalls gives rise to, um, gives rise to uh, a way of detecting lots of objects like uh, classical braids and virtual braids. And here, I would like to refer to Barnatan uh, because I'm not going to spend time to that. I don't have time actually. And here is uh, the list of references. Here is uh, the work of Barnatan. Uh, so here is uh, my work with Chrisman, uh, uh, where uh, we um, took some homology from fiber links. So having a fiber links, we can exchange one component for getting homology and we get lots of invariants which uh, can be constructed in a way of parity. So this work with Fedosev is about cobordism so that a cobordism with uh, foldings uh, give rise to cobordism without foldings. So it's a work of Gibson uh, who uh, found that three knots are non-trivial maybe one week after I did it. Uh, so actually there was a book about parity uh, maybe some six years ago. Uh, this is the work of Lou uh, when, when he constructed uh, self-linking by looking at odd crossings. And actually it was Lou who first uh, found that we should uh, look at odd crossings. And uh, in this case, knots behave, virtual knots behave like classical links and odd crossings behave like mixed crossings. And, uh, but that time people did not think about uh, uh, a free, a free group invariant and picture valid invariant. And uh, this is a sort of Cooperberg, uh, Cooperberg type invariant for graphs that we did with Lou. And there are many other papers. So uh, this is my first paper uh, about parity. And uh, so this is a 
paper about uh, how to study complex structure without parity. We can enhance Hovano cohomology by using parity. And uh, here is the book. Here is the book about uh, 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 getting invariants uh, valued in pictures. So uh, here we uh, did a lot for braids and uh, we um, sketched some way how to do uh, something for higher dimension manifold. Uh, so this was uh, the paper of Turaev where he conjectured ring outs to be trivial. Uh, so, uh, well, actually, uh, yeah, this is uh, the right time for me to stop. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you for the interesting uh, talk. Uh, someone, if someone has a question for the Vasily Mantrov, are there any questions? Maybe comments? So please unmute your microphones uh, or write whatever you wish on the chat line. So if uh, there is no questions, uh, let us uh, <clears throat> thank the speaker for the very interesting talk. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you very much for coming.